Dr. Ananta Murthy, who at the outset, without my even asking him about the newspaper, said, it's a very good newspaper. It's Kannada, it's very good. And it's a very good attempt by significant minorities to get into the mainstream and function like everyone else in that sphere. So I, I rely on the judgment and the critical taste of Dr. Anantamurthy to congratulate this newspaper on what it has accomplished over a decade. I was invited to say a few words on journalism and the state of the news media. So I will try to do that in the short time that uh, we have here. I think you need to come to grips with critical issues. The first challenge, I think, is the need critically to reflect on and rethink the implications of the growth story of the Indian news media. I, I confine myself to news media and not media in general, because that's a much bigger field about which I don't know enough. So I will confine my remarks or observations to the performance of the news media, that is newspapers, news television, radio in, in so far as it deals with news analysis, comment, etc. And then of course the digital media or the new media, the internet, internet media, which deal with news. Now, India, as everyone knows, is one of the few places on earth where newspapers still thrive. As uh, Ken Auletta put it in a recent article in the New Yorker, a very interesting article that came out uh, last year in, in the New Yorker, a very fine publication. And India is one of those places where plenty of professional opportunities are available for journalists, especially young journalists. We still have it. But, so there's a lot, there's a great deal of literature on it, and you'll find articles that say that whereas in developed countries, newspapers are in decline, printed newspapers are in decline, and new, in fact, journalism faces a crisis, because what is the business model that will sustain it? A lot of people read it online, but they do not pay for it. So there is a, a crisis of journalism, crisis of the news business, if you like, largely concerned with advertising and subscriptions. But in contrast, in India, because of our very backwardness in this respect, because of the poor growth of the internet, you may have certain numbers, but if you look at the internet's penetration in the population, whereas in developed countries it is 75, 80 percent, and even China has more than 560 million internet users, most of them served by broadband, minimally defined. India's record in this is very poor because we have only 11% of the population. The, I mean, penetration of the population is only about 11%, according to whatever data we have. This backwardness is itself an advantage to both newspapers and television. This has to be understood. And once the digital revolution really takes off, there's a lot of hype about it here, but it's not really taken off if it reaches only 11% of your population. And the, but if it really takes off, imagine the impact this will have on the news business. So improved technology, expanding literacy, steadily expanding literacy, better purchasing power, aggressive publishing, and last but not least, political excitement, in which we are second to none in, in the world. All these have contributed to these growth trends, but we must not exaggerate them. Because anyone who's in the newspaper business and the news television business knows that uh, growth has slowed down, not just for the economy in general, but in the industry itself, the news industry itself. There are some who do better than others. There's a lot of hype about it, but clearly you cannot return to the old ways of doing business. You have to cope with new ways. You have to find new ways. Nevertheless, the numbers are very impressive. I saw the latest, the last available figure of the Indian Readership Survey, which says that there are o over 350 million newspaper readers in India. Tele television, 578 million, according to IRS 2012, the quarter four uh, survey report findings. But of course, in, when you talk about this number for television, only about 
10% of that may be for news television. It's largely for entertainment. This gives you an idea of our the magnitude, the, the scale of the industry and its potential. It's already big, it will get bigger. But this is the critical point, I think. Do not confuse the state of the news industry with the state of journalism. This is the first point I want to highlight. These are related but two different things. You may have a very dynamically growing newspaper industry or news television sector, but it doesn't guarantee good journalism unless you take the kind of steps, unless you come with a vision, a conceptual framework for journalism, and unless you have safeguards that prevent journalism from getting corrupted. We've already had the scandal of paid news, which is a rogue practice, but there are many other tendencies which concern us, and the chairman of the Press Council, a former Supreme Court Judge, Justice Markande Karju, has been very uninhibited in pointing out the weaknesses, the vices, the deficiencies, intellectual deficiencies of journalism in India. We may not agree with everything he says, but I think it's worth listening to the criticism that he makes. Too much superstition and obscurantism. Not enough attention to people's issues and problems. And most important, according to him, journalists don't educate themselves, equip themselves with the knowledge that is required to function in the contemporary world. These are all, I think, legitimate criticisms. It's not going to be easy to overcome these weaknesses, but we have to do it over time. That is the first point I wish to make. Secondly, you need a conceptual framework for journalism. What is that framework? And I think, uh, I don't want to go into excessive detail, but I'll indicate to you my kind of framework, which uh, good journalism has to adopt in the Indian or any context. The idea that information, and specifically the news media, can play a substantive role, even a crucial role, in the formation of public, pol uh, public opinion in society, and in shaping public policy on major issues, social issues, political issues, economic issues, this is an appealing idea in intellectual and socio-political terms. The discovery that historically on vital matters such as mass hunger, deprivation, and a sudden collapse of entitlements, timely and relevant information makes a qualitative difference to the way public opinion is shaped and official policy is made to respond is somewhat flattering to our profession. In a sense, it begs a larger question. It depends on the kind of independent or relatively independent role that newspapers and other news media are allowed to play in society. This in turn depends on the political system and practice the constitutional and legal safeguards and the information cultures that prevail in society. These observations apply primarily here to the printed press, which has played the most, in my opinion at least, the most substantive role in the formation of public opinion in society. And we can also claim preeminence in a historical sense. So looking at it in this perspective, what are, the two, what are the functions or roles of the news media, the serious news media? I think there's been a, quite a literature on this subject, and people like Amartya Sen have also written on the subject. But these functions can be basically simplified and designated as, one, the credible information function. Are you accurate? Do you provide perspective, proportionality, and so on? This is a key question. And it's important when you, go, when you seek to win the reader's trust. The second function is a critical function. It's an investigative function. Sometimes it turns into an adversarial function. And uh, again, it's important. It doesn't depend just on you. It depends on whether the political system, for whatever reason, gives newspapers free or relatively free reign and also whether there's a public culture that values these functions. These are, I think, important 
accompanying conditions, if not preconditions. So these are the two central functions, the credible information function one and the critical investigative watchdog or adversarial function when it turns adversarial. And I think we've had this in Indian history because of our freedom struggle, also on various social issues, social reformers, revolutionaries, emancipators and so on. They have made quite a contribution in this particular area and uh, take the importance of literary work, whether it is Dr. Anantamurti or Mahadeva, their contribution to raising awareness, but not in any propagandistic way, in the best way known to us, great literary work, Anantamurti's Samskara, which will be read, I think, for a very long time to come. One of the great works of contemporary Indian literature, internationally acclaimed, and uh, so on. This, I think, is very, very important. We've had this great advantage. We should not squander it the way it is being squandered today. The second function, I think, is very, very important. The critical function is the one that sustains the interest in news media, not for its own sake. I'm not talking about just spy cameras, stings, and so on but investigating the realities, the lives of the people, providing a perspective on it, providing analysis, comment, and naturally politicians and others would expect suggestions. We also have a diagnosis, they will say, but what is your prescription? What do you want us to do? Be as concrete as possible. I think journalism can play a great role if it undertakes this ambitious task. Thirdly, we can't be always too serious or stiff, there is an entertainment function or a pastime function. But as I agree with Justice Karju that this must be treated in proportion. If 80% of your content is entertainment and 20% is not, then there's something seriously wrong with journalism, although you, there's a place for entertainment publications. This, I think, is very important. Then there are important derivatives from these two central functions. One is the function or role in public education. It's widely recognized that the press, television, radio, and the digital media have the potential to make a major difference in this area. And I think the press has played this historically with some of our, then I think that journalism is going to end up in a dead end. So I think you have to strike a proper balance between the editorial independence of a newspaper and the need to make it commercially viable. And that, I think, is a huge challenge we still haven't be, uh, been able to get on top of. But hyper-commercialization, hyper the tendency to dumb down sensationalism and so on, all these detract from this role of public education, this derivative that I mentioned. There is a second derivative, I think, that is very important. It is what can be called agenda building. New, journalists would be claiming too much if they thought that they were setting the public agenda. I think it doesn't happen. And I myself have many lessons in this. We thought that this is a very big story, but in your particular state, whereas it has a big impact elsewhere, in your own state, the issue, it may not go in your favor. You think you've done a great job in investigating some corruption scandal, but in your own state, people are not much influenced by that. We've had many experiences of this kind. So journalists should not think that they set the agenda, but we can certainly participate in building an agenda in partnership with various other groups, which I think is what uh, uh, this, in this newspaper has sought to do from a very humble start. And uh, so I think what does, what, let's be as concrete as possible. In the remaining three or four minutes left to me, I'll try to deal with the kind of issues that should be taken up. I think you have to cover the objective realities of, 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 of our society, the way people live in both country, uh, rural areas and also in our cities and towns. In the Asian College of Journalism with which I'm associated, which was kind of very kind mention was made of that earlier, we have a required course called Covering Deprivation. Covering deprivation, whether a journalist, a young student, 
who wants to become a journalist likes it or not he or she has to go through this course we are talking about income deprivation food deprivation food and nutrition deprivation gender deprivation health deprivation educational deprivation environmental deprivation social deprivation where whole classes or large sections of a class or a section of society suffers a huge disadvantage discrimination oppression the best example of course is dalits in india and we are ashamed of the fact that even today the indian newspaper industry has very a very very small proportion of dalits people like e sainath and others have written on this subject and in our, in our own in the asian college of journalism special scholarships are available but something works against it to prevent uh, due participation because there are many uh, educated dalit uh, young people young men and women but newspaper the news industry is not able to provide decent opportunities for them to develop their potential and show their skills to make a mark in the field of journalism although i've heard, i've seen some reports that say the situation is improving slightly in delhi and other places we shall see this is important because in any field diversity is important you take the number of for example muslims in journalism i don't have the data on it although we have some data on dalit journalists but again what is the role what is the place they have in the news industry as a whole it doesn't depend on any one factor it depends on a number of other things but we have to but what is the the concept is the, the principle is you need diversity you need representativeness in order to reflect what is happening in society so i think i'll end on that note that uh, the news media in this country the news industry the leaders of journalism have to make a conscious and dedicated effort to build this diversity to get closer to the lives of the people to remove the impression that the media are a privileged and spoiled lot the lots of public criticisms assail you every day and you can see the social media twitter facebook and so on to see what kind of abuse and sometimes legitimate criticism harsh criticism that journalists major journalists in this country attract including me for the views i take so you have to respond to that so i think this is very very important at a time when you need public support and you need to retain the trust of the public in india we've had a huge advantage thanks to the history of the press in india the press has got had a good reputation i think in my opinion over the long term but we are in danger of that being eroded or weak or diluted it diluted accepted within the industry i don't know how to proceed i think this newspaper and your venture has shown a certain path that you can start in a small way you can start with a mission you can engage with readers you can broad base your appeal if you are focusing on deprivation on lack of opportunities in society on non inclusiveness non inclusion of very significant sections of society then i think you can do something about it that is the lesson that we can learn from your own successful experience and on this occasion let me congratulate you on this excellent effort again certified by those like dr anantamurthy and mr mahadeva and i hope that uh, this newspaper and many like this will do well in this country and then prove that uh, it is not just growth in the news news industry that matters but the state of journalism its quality its relevance and the value it gives to ordinary people in society especially the most disadvantaged thank you very much indira karyakramad udghatakaragiruva padmabhushana n ram avarige namma ee karyakramadalli gaurava atithigalagi palgondiruva devanura mahadev avaru namma ee karyakramakke aagamisi aasinaragiddare shriyuta devanura mahadev avarige ee karyakramakke atyanta rutpurakavagi swagathavanna bayasutta afroz asadi avaru hoogucchavanna astantarisi gaurav isbeku antheli vinantistayidene